Zyka Grande, the Forgotten Skydom. As I gazed into its perennial blue, I reflected on my last time here, during my travels with him. My memories of this place were distant, yet unforgettable. Have you been here before, Rosetta? Hmm? <laughs> Perhaps I have. Who can say? Eventually, I'll share my tales of the Captain's father and our journey together. When the time is ripe, of course. But first, I would need to sort through my own emotions. It was here in these skies that we would eventually part. I know, I know. In the eyes of Eternity, our time together lasted no longer than a blink. Yet his impact on me felt nothing short of eternal. Indeed, it wasn't nostalgia that I felt upon revisiting these skies. Rather, it was the significance of this place, and all that transpired here, that weighed heavily upon my heart. During the war, primal beasts were exploited by the Astrals as instruments of battle. Withered and faded, one primal would eventually drift to Lumassier Archipelago, making a home for herself. Over time, she grew accustomed to the comforts of its forests and the serenity they offered. It was a far cry from the brutalities of war. Centuries would pass until a young man stumbled upon her domain, forever altering the course of her life. She engaged him in a vicious battle, but was ultimately humbled in defeat. Accepting her fate, she resigned herself to death. However, the man would sheathe his blade and, to her surprise, asked if she would join him on a journey across the skies. A primal beast was supposedly no more than an astral weapon. Beings born to be controlled, manipulated, and ill-used since time immemorial. She had never entertained the idea of something more. In fact, she hardly had a name for herself. Well, she did have a moniker, but it was a meaningless one whose sole purpose was to identify her as a weapon. Perhaps out of pity, perhaps out of kindness, the man bestowed upon her a new name. It was from that moment she would truly blossom. Rosetta. It was his gift to her, one she would treasure and love for eternity. With every union comes an inevitable separation. When his journey neared its final chapters, as he took up arms against the God of Destruction, I returned to the forests of Lumassier. After my return to the archipelago, I briefly longed for his companionship, but the flora and fauna kept me company. Decades came and went, and one day I would encounter yet another young visitor to the island. There was no mistaking it. This was his offspring. I realized at that very moment the time had come. He'd entrusted this child to me from the ends of the skies. My heart swelled, but I concealed my excitement, flashing naught but a smile at the young captain. I would join the up-and-coming Skyfarer's crew on the Grand Cipher for another journey across the skies, this time as a bystander. During their travels, they would experience joys and triumphs alongside loss and hardship. I continued to observe from afar, doing my best to obscure my true intentions. My roots were well planted in the past, Knowing what I knew, would I be able to act as a part of their crew in earnest? Before long, my ambivalence would come to a head. My convictions had begun to waver. Was this the right approach? Of course, I was conscious of reality. I knew their journey wouldn't be easy. They would have to face the harsh life the skies had in store for them. And with our foes only becoming more and more cumbersome even for myself, could I possibly protect them? 
My presence on the Grand Cipher was inconsequential, and at worst, a hindrance to the crew. I thought if I weren't here, the captain, Eo, the entire crew would handle themselves just fine. Perhaps the time had come to retire to the forests once more. But as I was preparing to leave, Eo grabbed my hand so sweetly, so innocently, and said she needed me to stay. I couldn't bring myself to abandon her. I would be the bystander no longer. Everyone in the crew had a role to play, and I would be the exception no more. Finally, I found my purpose. I was free to experience the skies once again, hand in hand with the captain. It wasn't duty or obligation that anchored me to this crew. It was love. And I promised to always protect them. I would leave no regrets in the skies. Thus, our journey continued. Only this time I felt that I was a true member of the Grand Cipher. During our stay in Seed Hollow, a certain request made its way into our hands. We were to inspect sightings of a mysterious young girl near the Seed Hollow Castle. You don't think she's a ghost, do you? I put a hand on Lyria's shoulder to comfort her, and asked the client for more details. According to reports, the young girl appeared to be looking for something. Workers helping with the castle's restoration effort would attempt to approach her, but she would vanish before they could get close. Each sighting would spook another handful of builders, until there weren't enough hands to complete repairs. By all accounts, it seemed to be a ghost. Of course, I couldn't admit that to Lyria. It was not uncommon for spirits to take refuge in ancient ruins or castles, and play tricks on any unfortunate souls passing by. They were almost never malicious, even friendly sometimes. However, we couldn't take our chances. I just wished we had more information to work with. There was something familiar about this story. I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. The bustling streets and alleyways of Seed Hollow were steeped in an unusual silence. Rumors of the phantom sightings had spread and the citizens became too fearful to leave their homes. We were still missing a part of the picture, but what was it? I'm sure it was just someone's minds playing tricks on them. Poor Lyria. I needed to wrap up this investigation as quickly as possible. However, despite our comprehensive search of the castle, nothing stood out as unordinary. We'll have to come back another day, I... Just then, I noticed a faint movement in the corner of my eye. Wait, it couldn't be. Huh? What are these guys doing here? We already took care of Angra, mind you. Ominous forms. Foul creatures born from the primal beast Angra, mind you. Surely they weren't the cause of the sightings, were they? I had my doubts, but this was no time for questions. The castle was in dire need of some pruning. Such hostility. It seems we've no choice but to... Are you sure these are the ghosts we're looking for? Something about this place gives me the willies. We'll uncover the truth soon, so hang in there, okay? This place will need more than a restoration if we don't do something about this. disappears if you attempt to get close, but perhaps that wasn't the entire truth. Our job's not finished yet, shall we?
They've infested the entire courtyard. Who's ready for a pruning? Even the fighting up close won't do us good here. Sounds to me like it's time for a ranged battle. That's right up your alley, isn't it? Refreshing, isn't it? What a fun break. Come join me. Come, Crimson. Welcome to my garden. They hunt from underground. You can't lose track of all Terror. Please. Please. Got it. More. Bring it. Oh. There's such a thing as being too popular, you know? Quite a tenacious bunch, aren't they? Just to me, where are they coming from? There's still more of them? Get a clue already! Leave the front. That should be the last of them. Wait a second. What is that? What's this? A crystal fragment. I took a closer look. Within its faded luster was a familiar green aura. But where had I seen it before? Hold up a second! Doesn't that remind you of those hallowed ground spots? Vern was right. Its glow was nearly identical to the crystals found on hallowed grounds. Their unique aura kept monsters at bay, providing travelers with safe haven. Did this shard come from one? It's faint, but Excavalian's aura. I can feel it coming from inside. That couldn't be. I focused on the crystal splinter in hand, and indeed, there was the presence of a familiar primal. Excavalian was the primal beast of Dolly Island, much farther than a stone's throw from here. So why were we able to feel its presence all the way in Seed Hollow? It's not the only one. I think I can feel another primal beast here, too. Another primal? How could that be possible? A phantom girl, excavalian, ominous forms, and now another primal beast. None of it made any sense. As we unraveled more of the castle's secrets, it became clear that we had barely scratched the surface of its walls. We were back at square one. In hopes of finding some new leads, we split up and interviewed every Seed Hollow local we could find. Despite our efforts, we found little new information. Zothba and his connections, on the other hand, proved invaluable once more as they unearthed a new clue. The girl wore a crown of flowers. I froze in place. I knew this primal. In fact, I learned of her on my first visit to Zega Grande. Konohana Sakria, was it? Yes. An ethereal girl bearing a floral crown? It had to be her. Her presence would explain why Lyria sensed a primal beast in addition to Excavalian. She was pack-bound to Ulmarine Island, and she held domain over blossoming flowers. The unusually vibrant bouquets blooming across Seed Hollow just added more proof of her proximity. With the culprit identified, only one problem remained. Me. After what Sakuya and I went through, I doubt she would ever show herself around me again. Before I could share this revelation, there was something else I needed to discuss with the crew. Not about Konohana Sakuya, but my time spent with the captain's father. His crew was on a journey to collect Astrum fragments. These fragments were said to have fallen straight from the astral realm, 
and contained the power of the primal beasts themselves. Using the fragments, the captain's father could separate astral power embedded within primal beasts and return them to their original forms. That was the purpose of his journey. His was a mission of liberation, to free so-called deities and legends who were tethered to the Sky Realm. Once free from the shackles of their corporeal forms, they could fade back into the nebulous ideas and faiths that had given them structure in the first place. Of course, it would be up to the primal beasts themselves to make this decision. Some had grown quite fond of living in the Sky Realm. However, there were countless others who were born into the skies, cursed to fight for eternity. These were the ones who longed for a return to the immaterial. At the lowest point in my existence, when I felt I had no purpose in these skies, I'm sure I felt the same. Regardless, some were quick to brand us a ruthless crew of primal hunters. And surely Konohana Sakuya had heard the rumors. But the question remained, why had she decided to reveal herself to me now? Unfortunately, simply knowing the identity of the girl would not solve the problem of her many phantom appearances. So, is this a Kahuna Yakuza? You think she's the one causing the monsters to come out? Unlikely. I've never met her in person, but I don't think she and the ominous forms are connected in the slightest. Yo, got some new intel on the girl. You're still uh, working the case, right? The family Zothba had been continuing to search for clues in the background, and thankfully, their search bore fruit. In one of the areas where the ghostly girl was sighted, a bystander had found an ancient book. Broke my brain trying to read the dumb thing, but you're smart. Pretty, uh, pretty smart and, well, yeah. Oh, poor boy couldn't even get his words straight. Thank you. You're quite the gentleman. No, no, no I'm not. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a badass. Uh, anyway, I should get going. He had barely placed the book in my hands before scurrying off. What had gotten into him, I wonder? I opened the book and peered through the rune-like characters inside. No normal person would be able to decipher this. How? That looks really complicated. Really? Let me see. When Vern approached the book, Roland's transceiver began to glow. It illuminated the text, somehow morphing the illegible script into something readable. My breath caught in my chest. Had an astral authored this book? The text seemed to be a log from an experiment of sorts. Although it was barely legible, I tried to grasp its meaning. Originally, it was Excavalian, primal beast of fortification, who forged a pact with Almarine Island. Although it's unclear why, Excavalian would eventually migrate to Dali, leaving Konohana Sakuya to take its place on Almarine. That was all I could make out of the texts. With this new information, I needed to re-examine the facts. First, the stage. Almarine Island. Home to Seed Hollow and its citizens, once protected by Excavalian. Next, a curious switch. Konohana Sakuya takes its place as the island's pact-bound primal. Now are present mysteries. A crystal shard replete with Excavalian's aura. On Grimainu's altar beneath the castle, the ominous forms. And finally, Konohana Sakuya's curious reappearance. Think, Rosetta. Was the shard left behind by Excavalian? Did it serve a purpose in protecting the island? It was possible that Avia's invasion of Seed Hollow destroyed this mechanism, causing the Primal to reveal herself in defense. Now that I think about it, 
The ghost rumors started to pop up only after that crystal beneath the castle was destroyed. So, it was all connected. There's no time to explain, but more ominous forms will appear if we don't repair this island's defense system. Where could we find another fortifying crystal? How about Dolly? That's where Excavalion lives now, right? Maybe it's got a spare lying around. Indeed. If we were to find a solution to our problems, it would be buried beneath those churning sands. If I'm not mistaken, we should come across a Guardian Crystal not too far from here. Let's take a look around those hills. Do you remember where we fought that griffin? Oh, oops. Didn't mean to wake you. Mind letting us pass through? <sighs> Come join me. the crystal we're looking for. Shortly after securing a crystal from Dolly, we returned to Seed Hollow Castle. We installed the new crystal beneath the castle, causing a pale green light to illuminate the area. It was the familiar aura of hallowed ground, sure to repel any lingering ominous forms. It's too bad we couldn't meet her, Konohana Sakuya. The mystery had been solved on nearly all fronts, I'd be lying if I said I was completely satisfied, however. After all was said and done, I still didn't get the opportunity to clear the air with her. Peace returned to Seed Hollow, and it was soon back to the usual hustle and bustle. I informed the frightened repairmen of the girl's true identity, the primeval god of Seed Hollow. A primeval god? Holy macaroni! That's a spicy nugget of news. How do you manage to stay so charming and informed? Hmm? <laughs> a lady never reveals her secrets. It's a little sad that you couldn't meet Konohana Sakuya. I know you wanted to apologize to her. I knew somewhere deep down that talking with her wouldn't bring back all the journeys I had with the captain's father. However, seeing all the blooming flowers across the city, it almost felt as if she was acknowledging me anyway. I may well have imagined it, but... call it something of a mutual understanding between distant sisters. After the vibrant patchwork of spring began to spread throughout Seed Hollow, I made a habit of taking a daily stroll around the city. 
On one of my walks, I had mindlessly put the crystal fragment in my dress. After arriving at a particularly sunny spot, I took it out to admire it. Something about it was different today. Instead of my usual reflection, if not only for a brief second, I saw a smile that wasn't my own. A girl in a flower crown. Our eyes met for a second before, pop, a single rose had materialized at my feet. When I looked back into the fragment, she was nowhere to be seen. Although I can't prove it, I know that she was here, listening to me. So I whispered, Beautiful. This city has blossomed under your care, all while blooming in your own right. You deserve to be here.